Hello interwebs, welcome to I Shaved My Beard. I mean, let's fix computers. Um, it's a long story, I'm not going to go into it here, but yeah. Felt like a change. Let's move on. Um, I don't know how to start this video. I've had a lot of burnout this month. Um, there hasn't been much for me to make videos on. I've not really wanted to make any videos and I've been having issues with my recording setup. You know, that issue where the cameras jump a lot? That's really getting on my nerves. I think I might have solved it or at least gotten toward a solution in this one just in time for me to be having issues where uh, OBS crashes when I hit stop recording. And even now as I'm recording, I can see that my volume levels are peaking. So let me fix that super quick. So anyway, it is Thursday afternoon and I have not made a video in two weeks. However, I've got a MacBook Air here, which I think has a power fault. Fingers crossed this is going to be a nice, easy board repair just to get me back into the groove. So let's take a look. Uh, this, is, um, this is an A2337, so it's a MacBook Air M1. Um, and if I bring up the Paul Daniels meter, uh, let me just quickly plug this guy in. And right, so let's plug this in. And if I plug it into the back port, we get absolutely nothing, no response at all. If I plug it into the near port, and we're seeing a very unhappy power input. That looks like an internal short to me. You can see we've got big current spikes, uh, and it's just cutting in and out, switching on and off. So yeah, that's a very unhappy laptop. So I would love to try plugging it in you know, turn the cable over, try it in other orientations and stuff. But because I think we have a short circuit in there, I'm not going to mess around with that. We're just going to open it up and take a look. So uh, let's roll the intro while I try and find my P5 screwdriver uh, and get the back cover off of this. And we'll come under the microscope and see if we can find out why this thing doesn't power up. See you after the graphics, everyone. Bye. Right, no hints on the dust patterns. That looks pretty clean. This laptop has actually been in before for a screen replacement, so uh, it has been opened up. Not seeing anything screamingly wrong. Let's disconnect the battery and do some stabbing. That skipping just came back. Damn it. All right. We're just going to deal with it for now, folks. I th It came back just as I plugged in the multimeter cam. So I think it might be something to do with just number of devices connected. Sorry, we're just going to deal with it because I need to get this video done. But I am fully aware of it and I'm working on it. Anyway, let's keep going. So I'm going to put my black probe on a ground point. I started putting my black probe on the back of big capacitors instead of on screw holes because when you're using a f when you're using fine probes like this going onto flat metal you don't get a very good connection whereas if you go onto the back of a capacitor you're stabbing a solder blob and the needles will poke into the solder a bit better and you get just a way better connection it's just to zoom down a bit further so you can see where I'm stabbing so uh, let's just probe a couple of these capacitors these should be on the main rail Okay, nothing going on there. High resistance, high resistance. Okay. I'm going to preemptively stab the audio board over here because that's a classic. Oh, that's ground anyway, yep. Yeah. Nope, there's no main rail short. Well, that's disappointing. Hmm. Uh, all right, let's get the motherboard out. Let's go digging in a bit further. That kind of short circuit that we're seeing, um, that looks like it might be an input short. I saw on a recent um, laptop that I didn't make a video on it, and I wish I had, but whatever. Um, I saw on a recent one, there was a blown protection diode at the USB input. 
um, that was just causing a big short circuit right at the input. Um, and because it was all at the USB input, it did not show up as a main rail short. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that we might have a similar deal here, which would explain why we're not getting any, you know, immediately obvious issues. Okay. Let's take out the actual connectors as well, just before I start spending time on the board. Ugh. Well, there's your problem, folks. Yeah. That's uh that's pretty heavily liquid damaged. So Yeah. This thing's seen liquid before. Um I wonder if that was I wonder whether that happened when the um screen was was damaged. And this is an after effect of that. Okay. Well, Spoilers, but yeah, that that's a problem. When you when your Type C ports look like that, um, they ain't gonna work properly. Uh, I will try and clean these up. However, in my experience, these things usually don't clean up, and you've got to replace them. So um, let's attack those with a toothbrush and some um, alcohol. Actually, I'm gonna go glass cleaner. Actually, I'm gonna go alcohol because that's the one that's on the bench. And we'll just see if these will clean up. I'm just gonna. Just drench those. Grab a toothbrush. I'm just going to scrape at a couple of those pins just to see if they shine up or if they're damaged. That pin's damaged. That one's okay. That one's fine. That's damaged. That one's damaged, but probably okay. Right, I'm not holding my breath here. Do I have a spare one of these? I don't think I do. Oh, I can steal one from another laptop, though. All right. Uh, let's just test that and see if that's done anything. So I shall just put that back on the board. Let's uh, zoom back out a little bit. I'll connect this back to the board. Um, I've got a spare one of these, so I'm going to change it. Um, and uh, we'll send it on its way. You can find these on eBay for a couple of quid. Um, so I think this one's a no-brainer. Even if it works, I don't think it can be trusted at this point. Right, so let's watch the Paul Daniels meter again. Still dead. Of course, this assumes that the... Uh, board itself isn't damaged and confidence is not high with that right now okay that one's working there's 20 volts although it cut out again no that's fine that was a power cycle and is the board going to power up Uh, it's not very happy. What happens if I turn that over? Nothing. No, it's not happy. I'm going to try a different connector. This one's my breaker MacBook Air at the moment. It needs new NAND chips on it. Which I might have a go at at some point. But today is not that day. So I'm going to sit and continue to steal parts from it. 
Right, can I get... Yes, I can remove that without having to take out the board. That's nice. Come on. Can I squeeze that out? Yes, I can. There we go. Ah, uh, there we go. That's what they're supposed to look like. Beautiful and clean. So let's put these on this board and see if we get a different result. All right, please work because otherwise I've got to start messing around with the CD chips and those are scary. Here we go. Ah, five volt. Oh, that's 200 milliamps straight away there, I think. Okay, I'm not seeing the... Oh, there it goes. Oh, it tried. Are you going to start? Okay, that looks like it's starting. Yeah, that's starting now. Then it cut out again. All right, I think the board is a bit upset. I'm going to let it think. All right. I'm not sure if the board is starting or not at the moment. Like right now, that's that's making that's making motions like it's starting and then it switches off again. But I'm seeing that as a sign of life. I'll just quickly try in all orientations, then we'll put the board back in the laptop and it should work again. You can see here the value of having a Type-C power meter. We get so much more information here. You can do it with one of the little natty inline ones with the screen on it. Just if you have something like the Paul Daniels power meter here, it just makes life a lot easier. Yeah, same thing. That's good enough for me. Um, what I want to see is that it will give all of that spiky output and then it will settle down at a steady, I don't know, 200 milliamps or something like that, as if it's turned on and is now sitting on the login screen. Um, that's what I want to see. Um, however, the fact that it's not like... Um, previously, the top port wasn't working at all and the bottom port was giving like the spiky output and stuff like that. So uh, we seem to have gotten somewhere. When I'm putting these ports back in, I just put the screws in loosely, then plug something in and just make sure that the connector is nice and settled and then I do the screws up and that just ensures that they're nicely centralized in the chassis. Nice. Right, I've just put a couple of screws in. I'll leave everything else out at the moment in case it's coming apart again. We'll connect the battery up, locking lever down, okay plugging into the back port, 5 volts, 20 volts, Chime Apple logo, and Now we're looking to see if it's actually going to charge the battery. Oh, the battery's full. Oh, that's not a very good test. However, we are seeing we are now seeing a steady current draw. So we're seeing that, you know, 150 150-ish milliamps. That's what I was looking for, that steady state of just the laptop being on. Uh that's what I wanted to see. Oh yeah, we're, not, we're seeing some battery charge now. So there you go. So we saw that little, there's the little staircase in the in the graph as it steps onto charge. So it goes up by a little bit, checks everything's okay, then a bit more and so on, and then climbs up to actual charge current. And now that's pulling about two amps to charge the battery. Cool, right. Does the battery have any charge in it? No, I've just seen the uh, the icon in the top right update to nothing. So yeah. Uh, all right. 
Right, that's that. So um, yeah, just some bad, um, just some bad Type C connectors. Um, so um, even though I've cleaned these up, they still didn't work. And what I found in my experience is just when these get liquid damaged, it just eats into the connector. And even if you clean them up so they look sparklingly clean, and even if the pins on them look okay. Once they've gotten messed up like that, the corrosion just seems to get inside them, and that's it, you're toast. Just for funsies, let's just jump onto eBay and just find a replacement one so I can show you what that looks like. All right, so here we are on eBay, and I'm going to type in the number that's on the back of the connector, which is uh, 821-01658. There we go. Eight quid, which kind of sucks. Can we do any better than eight quid? No, not really. God, that's terrible, man. There's five quid for one from China. I might get that one because I'm replacing the one for my laptop, which is currently out of commission anyway. Yeah, I think that's the play. I'm going to buy me one from China. I might buy a couple of those, actually, just so I've got some in stock as well. I'm turning this one into a double bill. Um, I've got another, is this the same? Uh, this is an A1392, so it's another MacBook Air, but it's a slightly older one. And the back port is doing weird things. If I plug this in, one way up we get absolutely nothing from it. And if I flip it over, uh, if I flip it over, we get five volts and a solid 2.2 amps. And notice how the voltage is getting pulled down there. Um, now, I think that's a short circuit because um, that just bangs straight up to 2.2 amps, which is not a very precise number. And the voltage getting pulled down from 5 volts there makes it feel like the power supply is being overloaded at the given voltage. So that looks like another input short to me. Um, so I'm just going to carry on taking the back screws out of this one and we'll look at this as well and see if it's another example of some bad connectors and hopefully this video can be a bit more about well bad connectors i guess and once again honest dust here lots of honest dust uh, two finger marks just where i took the panel off but no scorch marks or any other signs of liquid damage or anything like that so yeah no big giveaways there Let's take the USB ports out and see if they have any stories to tell us. I should disconnect the battery first. Oh, same story again. So yeah, that is that is the top port. Lower port looks fine. Top port, yeah, that's pretty wrecked. <clears throat> all right yep same deal so yeah once again folks um i guess this video has turned into um just a good lesson on just checking these ports if you've got weird interactions if you're plugging a cable in and you think you've got power faults um and you know if you're looking at that going oh it's going to be a motherboard fault and i can't do board repair you might not have to it might be that simple so um so yeah uh, you know, you don't need to be a technician to be able to take these ports out. Um, in a lot, in in the case of the MacBook Air, you don't even have to take the logic board out. So yeah, easy repair for even a DIYer to do. So yeah, uh, I'll buy another one of those off eBay. I'll have to buy the eight quid one this time because I want it to show up uh, as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, uh, right. Well, that's the end of that double bill then. Thank you very much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Bye.